In a previous video, we made a comparison between this, the K969 and the K989. And we found that uh, these two cars are actually almost equal. Of course, the body looks different. And this one comes with grippy rubber tires. And this one they comes with hard compound drift tires. And then the last difference is that this one has lock diffs, where this one has open diffs. Some of these cars might have almost lock diffs because they are so tight, but uh, there's a fix for that. That's a video up here for how to fix that. But so in that video, we saw that this one, the drift car, this one, uh, it drifts much better than this one. And the reason is the lock diffs that makes the car much easier to drift. So just adding some drift tires to this one over here, uh, don't fix the problem because it simply needs that uh, lock diff to be a proper drift car. So you could just buy some lock diff and put into this one. So this is what I will try to do. I have here some uh, lock diffs, but um, instead of just adding a lock diff to both the front and the rear end, I'll try something different and only add a lock diff in the rear end. Because some real one-to-one uh, -one scale drift cars actually has that set up, has a lock diff in, in the rear end and an open diff in the front end. So that's what we're gonna do in, in this video. We're trying to put a lock diff in the back end, open diff in the front end, drift tires on all four wheels, and then make a comparison. Which of these two cars is now the best drift car? First, we remove this one, the upper deck. Diff case to get into the diff. So let's remove this part here. The suspension tower. Suspension arm. Just get rid of this one. It's a little easier. Just, yeah, it just snaps in and out here, so no problem removing that one. to remove this one too. It's really messy my car. <laughs> Maybe I should clean it up. Now have it open. So now we can open up the diff case. And here we have our diff. <laughs> Piece of carpet sitting. Oh, just remove that. So here we have the open diff. Now oh, let's take one of the lock diffs. And you see that's completed locks there's simply nothing in here it's just straight through and the bearings I'm gonna leave those those so 
so get a lot of this in. Also, kind of pieces in here. This is the more correct word. This is pretty small screws. Small fingers is nice here. So put all the screws in halfway in. So we have no lock diffs. Make sure you have the wires in the right way. Don't get them into trouble somewhere. Getting them stuck in gears, we don't want that. was the rear diff mounted so we still have open diff in front and a lock diff in the rear we just need to put on the drift tires The conclusion is that the K989 uh, doesn't drift well with a locked rear diff and an open front diff. It's actually the same conclusion as in the, the other video I've made where we compared the K969 with the K989, where the conclusion was exactly the same and the result was the same, that it doesn't drift well this one to make this one drift well you need to have a lock diff in both the front and the rear so why is that a problem let me try to explain that take this car so 
now we're going to make a tight left turn and as you can see the outer wheel turns a lot faster than the inner wheel if you go slowly you can clearly see it this car has open diffs both front and rear so you can see both in the front end and in the rear end that the inner wheels drive turns slower than the outer wheels and that's how we want it to be when we want to race we want to have traction all the time on all wheels but when we drift we want the car to drift we don't want to go in a turn we want to to drift like this in a nice going sideways so what we want is we want the car to to slide on both the front end and the rear end so what happens so what just happened in this test was that we had a open diff in the front and a lock diff in the rear so when we make a turn the the front end so the rear end immediately loses traction because because it has a lock diff so it forces both the inner wheel and the outer wheel to turn at the same rate and then it must lose traction because as we saw before the outer wheel needs to go farther than the inner wheel and the can't so they both lose traction but on the front end we still have a diff so it will actually of course you'll also lose traction at some point because we have these slippery tires but it will not lose as much grip on the front end because of the dip diff diff tries to make both wheels a uh, grip so that's the problem where the k969 has lock diffs both front and rear and therefore loses traction on both front and rear so what happens is we come want to make a drift we keep traction in the front end or we lose in the rear end and it slides this way that's not what we want <laughs> then we lose control in theory if we counter steer fast enough we could catch it but with such a short car like this it is really hard to to do that so it's a four-wheel drive car so we want it to drift like this some uh, have put in a comment that suggested to, that it actually drifts better with a locked rear drift and an open front diff but i think i have an idea why that is true for somebody and that is as you can see in an earlier video up here that these cars when you buy them uh, the diffs are, are very tight so this one is very smooth and that's because i have freed up the diff so it runs really really smooth so my theory is when you buy this one and you get one where the diffs are kind of tight so they work almost like a lock diff and then when you put on the drift wheels because they provide so little traction they don't have enough traction to make the diff rotate at different speed so it actually works like you have a lock diff and i think that's why some people experience that when you take the k989 and put some drift wheels on it it actually drifts well because often the diffs are so tight that they almost locked work as lock diffs but not on my car because i have freed up the diffs so they run really smooth so it works like a real open diff and then it doesn't drift well so that was my conclusion on this test and in the next test we will do the opposite thing put a lock diff in the front open diff in the rear and of course, put race wheel on and see how well it races. And why we're going to do that? And that's because large 110 scale uh, touring cars, they often come with a locked front diff and open rear diff. For more on that in the next video. So please subscribe so you can don't miss it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.